In this lesson, we're going to talk about the challenges that will come with UVing for normal maps. All right, so here you can see that we have a low polygon crate and we have a high polygon crate. Um, we are going to go through the process of UVing uh, this crate, and we'll also discuss um, some things to watch out for whenever you're baking for normal maps, uh, specifically toward UVs and smoothing groups. So let's take a look at our low poly uh, resolution mesh. I'm going to right click and hide all, or un um, hide unselected, excuse me. And you can see here that this is unwrapped pretty well. Um, there are a few things, um, or a few areas that are stretching right here along these edges where it was extruded. Uh, but that's pretty easy to fix, so we don't have to do a whole lot as far as um, unwrapping that. Um, there are a couple of things that we do want to take care of before we even start unwrapping, and that is going to be the smoothing groups of this object. Um, if I go ahead and I select all the polygons in this box and I scroll down to my smoothing groups, you're going to see that I have several different smoothing groups that are being used here and it's not clear on which one is which. So what I like to do is I like to just clear all and then I'll go to polygon mode hitting 4 on the keyboard and then go back down to the smoothing groups and start setting those up. So it really comes down to what is going to be smooth and what's going to be a hard surface. So like this surface here all the way around this is going to be smooth. Let me deselect that. So these are going to be smooth here, and same thing across the bottom. And I'm going to put these all on one smoothing group. Okay, and let's make sure that we don't select any um, other polygons by accident. Okay, so that looks fine. I don't see anything extra. Uh, so we're going to put that on smoothing group one, and that's going to smooth those polygons out. Seeing how they're touching, um, it's going to make sure that they're smooth. I'm going to do the same thing on the corners. Uh, let me go to vertex mode, select just the corner pieces. Let me show you how to convert selections just to make this go a little bit faster. So just select those vertices along the corners. Once you've done that, you'll want to hold down control and then go to polygon mode right here, and you'll see that it selects those. And then we'll set those to smoothing group one. Okay. And it's okay if they're set to smoothing group one because they're not touching the other um, sets there, so that looks fine. Um, let's also take care of the corners along the middle. And let's set those to smoothing group one as well. And while you're going through selecting, make sure that you're on the selection tool. If you have the move tool turned on, you could accidentally move some things around. You don't want to do that, so just be careful. Um, now I'm going to take these along the, the bottom and the top, across the middle. And I'm going to set those to smoothing group 2. And that will create a hard edge between those polygons. Okay, set that to 2. And then I'm going to go across the middle here. And let's do just those two and these two. And I'm going to set those to 3. And then inside here, I'm going to set these to 4. Now you might be asking me, why are we setting up smoothing groups? I thought we were talking about UVing for um, normal maps. Well, smoothing groups have something to do with your baking. Uh, you want to set the smoothing groups up to roughly about the way you would set up um, the smoothing groups as if it was smoothed out in, with your normals. And so uh, we want to make sure that we're setting that up as well. I'm going to take these on the inside, just like so, across the top, set those to four. Okay. And then I'm going to take the loop um, here. Actually, let's do just these first. 
and I'm going to set that to 5 and we'll set this one to 6 and we'll do the same thing here and let's do this all the way around So key thing right now, just make sure that you're setting up your smoothing groups. Now if you're not sure about smoothing groups, we have plenty of lessons on those. So. Uh, but you know, smoothing groups aren't really all that difficult. Uh, just set them up the way that I have them here. Uh, now let's go across the middle like this. And we'll set those to smoothing group six, I believe. And hopefully we got all of them. I, th I feel like I've missed a couple. But we can do a quick check. Let's see this one. Missing that one. And this one. Set that to five. And I kind of feel like maybe that might not be right. That's six, five. What about down here across the bottom? That's going to be five. Set this one to six. Same thing for this one. I think we've got the rest of these. Nope. Set these to five so that way they're just different. And what about the top here? Yep, okay. So we should have everything. Do a quick check. Make sure that everything is on a smoothing group. And I know the front faces on these crates, those are not set up. We're just going to set these to 1. So we'll take a look at this and what it looks like with it all set up with our smoothing groups. And you'll kind of see what we're going for with this normal map. Okay, so smoothing groups are set up. So go ahead and turn off polygon mode. And I'm going to select this object and apply that modeling material. And you can see here what that looks like with the smoothing groups on. So it kind of it looks like it's smoothed out as it should look in game. Got those nice hard creases on those sharp edges and then smoothed out on the corners and looking really good. And this is kind of what it should look like with the normal map applied. Um, so um, now what we want to do is we want to bake out that normal map. So let's go ahead and unhide that. So unhide selection. And actually before we do that we need to unwrap this. Uh, this should go very quickly. So uh, with this guy we're going to go in and we're going to say uh, unwrap UVW and unwrap that and let's open the editor and you'll see here that it seems to be perfectly laid out um, it's got all these squares and everything looks pretty good but um, if we separate all of this out we should have five or uh, excuse me six different clusters and these represent all of the different sides of our box and if we select all of those and we do a relax you'll see that it takes more of the shape of the sides and it's going to look a little bit better. Now if we select all of these and we pack that, okay, that's going to give us the same size there. And then let me apply that texture map so we can see that. And you can see just how well that unwraps and it did pretty good. So it's not that hard to unwrap. Now there's going to be some issues and I'm going to show you what those issues are going to be with this unwrap itself. Let's go ahead and bake out this normal map because I need to show you the problem before we can go through and fix it. So with this, um, let's right click and actually let me reapply that modeling material. And with that applied, let's right click unhide all, no to the layers. And I'm going to right click and convert the low poly. And then we're going to hit zero to bring up our render to texture settings. Make sure you set your path up for your texture to be saved to. 
And then we're going to come in and we're going to say enable projection and we're going to pick the two high poly objects in this. And then we're going to reset our cage so that way it, it expands down and conforms to the low resolution mesh. And then I'm going to turn on shaded and point to point so that way I can see the cage coming out. And we're going to push that out and we're going to push that until the all of the dark gray is covered up. Okay, and we're looking specifically at the um, little bolts on this. And that's pretty good. Okay, that should give us a nice little bake there. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and set everything up for our bake. So let's turn on our options. We're going to have our ray mist check turned on. So that way if we do have any miss, uh, misses on our ray check, it will show us and we can rebake. Let's go through make sure you're using the existing channel for your object and let's add a normal map okay and we're going to do a quick test at 512 by 512 actually let's do a test at 1024 for right now and we're going to turn the target map slot off we're going to use a blank slot and I think we have everything except for the setup here go to your renderer and change the anti-aliasing filter to Catmall ROM and then let's close that and let's render it okay and there you can see it's rendered out it's not it doesn't appear to be the normal map it's showing us that material in the preview but we do have a normal map and I'll show you that here in just a moment let's close this down and then I'm going to take this uh, projection because we may have to do some reprojecting later on. I'm going to export and it's going to create a mesh called um, low poly cage 001. We're going to take that mesh and with it selected, let me make sure I grab it there. There we go. With that selected, let's put it on a new layer. So I'm going to do new layer and say projection and then with that layer let's make sure that we add it and let's go back to our crate layer and we'll hide the projection there we go and let's um, select that low poly I'm going to right click and convert it to edible poly and then we're going to right click and hide unselected and let's set up our material to show our normal map so let's go to the material editor and I'm going to create another standard material let's left click on the bump normal map or normal bump and then click on the normal slot and go to bitmap choose the normal map here hit open and let's assign that show in viewport and you'll notice it's not showing in the viewport if you go to your um, shaded view and you go down to materials realistic materials with maps and you'll see that the normal map applies and that looks pretty good. It's not too bad. If we go ahead and bump up the glossiness on our normal map, might get a little bit more read on that. So it looks pretty good for the most part. Now, if you take a look here in uh, some of these sharper areas, you're going to notice that we get this spacing, this black line that shows up on those corners. And that is from a problem with the normal map. Okay and it's a, mostly a problem with the UVing. Everything else looks really good. It's just that the UVs are creating this dark line on those corners.